So what the hell is a claw hammer, anyway? Hey you guys, Johnny Banjo with The Banjo File. Thanks for stopping by. So we've been talking about the basic claw hammer stroke, what it is and how to do it. Last video, we talked a lot about what it is and why it's important. And uh, in this video, we're gonna get started um, talking about how to execute it. But first, I need a banjo. Okay, that was easy. Now, um, the next thing we need is a plectrum. Now, before you start throwing things at your TV, I know that five string banjo is not played with a plectrum, I know. Go with me on this, okay? But let's say, let's say you don't know how to play five string banjo and you've gotten used to playing it with a plectrum. That is, uh, it's just a word, another word for a guitar pick. I got one in my hand right here. So, um, uh, maybe you've gotten used to doing it this way. And it looks like this, and I don't, I don't play any uh, instruments with uh, plectra, so uh, bear with me here as I screw this all up. But um, you've gotten used to using it um, to, um, it, it gives you the ability to play lots of rapid runs of notes because you can pick up and down with it. So you can do... I know, I'm terrible at this, but um, uh, you, you could do that for some reason if you wanted to do that. You, you could get good at doing If you, you would eventually get good at it. <laughs> I'm not good at it, but you're good at it, going up and down. Or like maybe like a mandolin player, you use your plectrum to sustain a single note because the banjo doesn't have much sustain, much like a mandolin. But you can go up and down rapidly. I'm doing it terrible, but you, you get the idea. You can, you can use it in that way. And um, this is how you've learned to play banjo for some reason, and you continue to use your plectrum until one day you find yourself stranded on a desert island. Just you and your banjo, and a seagull ate your plectrum. And then the seagull itself, in turn, was eaten by a shack. Ah, oh, shit, now what are you gonna do? You have no plectrum. Forget the plectrum. It's gone. It's gone. And you have nothing on this desert island that you can use as a plectrum. What do you do? You, you, you can't play banjo? Is there anything you could do? Is there anything on your body maybe that you could use as a makeshift plectrum? Maybe? My fingernails, right? My fingernails look kind of like a plectrum. Only, you know, um... I only get the one side, right? I, I can I can use the one side, the back side. It's much like a plectrum. It doesn't work the other way. I don't I don't I just got my the, the flesh of my finger on the other side, but on the one side, it's kind of like a plectrum. So I lose the ability to up pick, but I can down pick. I'm just using my finger. And I could pick strings, and I could strum, but I can only down pick. I can't, I lost the ability to up pick. So I can't do those rapid note runs like you might hear in a guitar solo, and I can't do uh, those uh, single sustain notes anymore by rapidly picking up and down. I, I lost the ability to do that. But there's a lot I can do. I could start playing old Joe Clark. <laughs> Um, just using that one finger and the nail on the one finger. A question might emerge as to which finger to use, because I've been using my index finger, but you could make a good argument that maybe it'd be better to use your middle finger, because your middle finger's longer. So, so maybe it's easier for you to use your middle finger. Okay, that works. <laughs> so you, you choose which finger you want to use uh, as your plectrum which fingernail you want to use as your plectrum. But then, yeah, as, as you keep doing this, using your makeshift fingernail plectrum, you figure out that, you know, just using your, your loose finger in this floppy way, that's not very good. I mean, the muscles, aren't, the muscles that move it aren't very strong. 
and it's hard to control your finger that way. So you might figure out that, well, it works better if I just keep, instead of trying to move my finger, I just keep my finger rigid and use my whole hand. Just keep the finger rigid and use the whole hand. That's all. I'm just keeping the finger rigid and using the whole hand to strum and pick rather than trying to move the finger. Because the muscles of the forearm are larger and stronger than the muscles in my finger. And that gives me a firmer, more powerful, uh, more definitive down pick for each one of my down picks. So, instead of trying to move the finger, I'm now moving the whole hand. Okay, that works better. That's easier. That's easier to control and it gives me a firmer... Um, uh, firmer strikes, if you will. Okay, that works well. So while I'm doing that, what about these other fingers here? I'm, I've been using my index finger, just moving my whole hand, holding the index finger rigid, and picking and strumming with the back of the fingernail of the index finger, using it as my makeshift plectrum. What about the other fingers? All right, well, they're just flopping around doing nothing if, I, if, if I'm just, if all I'm using is the index finger. So I'm gonna naturally wanna just curl them up out of the way, right? Just curl them up out of the way, just to get them out of the way. My thumb isn't doing anything either. It's just my, my index finger for right now. I don't know if you could see what I'm doing, but... I'm just using my index finger like a plectrum. Now, after I've been doing that for a while, just using that one finger as a plectrum, I might figure out that, that these other fingers here, I don't have to curl them tightly like this. Like if I, if I just loosen them up, instead of curling them tightly into a fist, if I just loosen them up and just lightly curl them like this, then I can use those other fingers to brace my striking finger against, rather than having my striking finger sticking out in the air like that and trying to strum like this. Pick and strum like that. If I loosely curl these other fingers up, then I can brace my striking finger against the other fingers. And, and you might have chosen your middle finger. I've chosen my index. <clears throat> and by bracing it like that, then I get even better strength and even more firm strikes. So what I end up having is my hand kind of loosely just curled up with one finger just sticking out a little bit, just jutting out a little bit beyond the others in a configuration that kind of re resembles a claw, right? <laughs> That's what I end up with. And those fingers are all just held together uh, firmly to make the hand into one unit. And that turns it into kind of a tool, a tool that I'm then just using to strike at the strings. I'm with the surface of the back surface of the fingernail of my index finger, for me, my index finger, being the striking surface. What do we call a tool that's used to strike things? Do we have a name for that? A hammer, right? We call that a hammer? I got a hammer in the shape of a claw. You see where I'm going with this? So what I want you to do is just take your claw hammer and just try strumming with it for now. Again, you're holding your hand, curling up the fingers, sticking one finger out just a little more. You got one, all the rest of them curled up, one finger jutting out a little bit beyond the others so that it will strike the strings and the other fingers are curled up out of the way. 
And you can use the other fingers to brace your striking finger so that they're all held together firmly. Uh, that gives them more strength and power. They're, the entire hand and all the fingers together are becoming a unit and, and the fingers are not moving. Just the hand is moving. And you're using the hand to strike the fingernail of the striking finger against the strings and sound them like you would with a plectrum. But you can only, you can only down pick, right? You can only down pick. Just try to strum with it for now. Just try to strum. Do it over the head where, the, where it meets the neck for the best tone. Don't try to do it down here by the bridge. Do it up here where the uh, neck meets the head and that's where you get the best tone for claw hammer banjo. Try to just strum the first three strings. Aim for the first three strings. Sometimes you'll hit just two. Sometimes you'll you'll hit all four. <laughs> Sometimes you'll you'll miss. <laughs> um, and that's okay. That's fine. Just avoid hitting the fifth string because in claw hammer, you never down pick the fifth string. You never down pick the fifth string with your striking finger. <clears throat> Only the uh, four long strings. So just aim for the four long strings. Aim for the for the first three. Try just strumming those. Do that 47 times until it feels comfortable, until you can just do that. Um, remember to keep the hand rigid. You're moving the whole hand as a unit. You're not moving or flapping around the fingers. You're not flicking the fingers. You are keeping the hand firm and rigid and not moving it, not moving the fingers. You're only moving the hand. And once you've got that down, you could do that. You could do it pretty well, pretty accurately. Most of the time you're hitting the three strings rather than four strings or two strings or missing altogether. <clears throat> then try hitting just the first string. It's okay if you sometimes miss. It's okay if you, oops, sometimes hit two strings. Um, if you, uh, punch through the string and whack into the banjo head like I've done several times already. <laughs> That's okay too. Um, later on in your claw hammer journey, we will uh, learn, you'll learn not to do that uh, quite so much. You'll learn to control that. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes you want that percussive sound and uh, sometimes you don't. And, and you'll eventually get enough control such that you're not whacking the head every time you uh, s uh, strike the first string. Um, but for now, it's fine. Do that 112 times until it feels completely natural. <laughs> And you could do it with some ease and accuracy until you can, you can consistently just hit that first string. Then I want you to try alternating. Alternate the string and a brush, what's called a brush, when we strum the uh, first three strings together. In Kwaima Banjo, that's called a brush. So try alternating single string with the brush, like this. about the thumb for now. Don't worry about what the thumb is doing. Just get an even rhythm going. Get comfortable switching between the one string and multiple strings. Do that all day long. Do that while you're sitting watching TV. Do that while you're waiting for your morning coffee to brew. Do that while you're sitting in the waiting room at your dentist's office. I guarantee that'll be the shortest wait ever. <laughs> do that until you can just do it easily without much thinking. 
until it just becomes natural. Striking the first string and then strumming three strings. And if you get bored with that, try uh, hitting one of the inner strings instead of just the first string all the time. Hit one of the inner strings, let's say, I don't know, maybe the second string, and, and, and alternate that with brushes and see if you could do that. That's more challenging. It takes a lot more control. Um, and again, it's okay if your accuracy is bad. It's gonna be at first. You're just learning this. And it's okay if the tone is not clear either. If you can't, if you don't always get a clear tone. Um, and you're not, I, I put my left hand up here as if I'm, as if it's doing something. It's not. I'm not doing anything with the left hand. Um, right? We're just working on the right hand for now. So we're just getting used to the motion and the feel for now. Um, so you could try. Maybe if you want, you could try alternating the first and second strings. If you feel really adventurous, I don't know, try, try, uh, try doing um, all the four strings. <laughs> um, play with that. Keep doing that. Uh, get used to the, the motion and the feel, the feel of the claw, the, uh, how, how that feels to make the claw, and the feel of striking the strings, how that feels on your finger, how that sounds, getting a good tone, um, and keep practicing that until it feels comfortable for you. And then I'll meet you in the next video. We'll talk some more. Because your middle finger is longer. <laughs>